and I couldn't tell anybody. You want God to do that for you? <coughs> Everybody else got a thousand and I got twenty-four. And I couldn't tell anybody for twenty years. was given it to people to go somewhere. And she found me up in the tabernacle asking God why I hadn't got mine. But she didn't know it. And she heard a word over me. God knows everything he has for you. It was just one word. And it was early in the morning I'm praying and wondering why I'm asking God what's wrong with me and I didn't get something. She said, are you so-and-so? Then I heard a word over. She said, I want to finance it. Come on. He's going to finance your word. Because he finances his anointing. And I knew she was the one that was giving $1,000 increments away. He's done it many other ways, but I'm telling you the highlights of a great story that you can think bigger than what you think. I'm nothing special, but I got it. I got before the face of the Lord asking, and I said, I'm not going to stop asking until you tell me why. If it hurts me, it's okay. And all of a sudden, I heard some movement there on the platform. It's dark, 530 in the morning. The story is, she said, she got out her checkbook, and I thought, she's the one. And she started to say, I'm going to give you one, no, two thousand. But I'm going to give you four today. And I'm going to send you 2000 every month for a year. That's when you didn't, you know, we lived on like $20 a month. <laughs> and then she said, I want you to go over to Dillard's and I want you to buy you the nicest wardrobe that you can buy and I want to pay for it. Honey, I didn't even know how to wear some of those dresses. And I couldn't tell a soul, not, not even my best friend, because they'd gotten a thousand dollar offering. And I knew none of them, not even myself, was strong enough to handle it. You understand? And so God is purifying the house of Jacob, the priesthood. He's purifying us to receive, I want you to listen carefully, to receive of these blessings of the Lord. For three weeks, I just sat and watched everybody else get blessed. And I went to him and I, I wanted, he didn't say a word. Here comes the checkbook. Mm -hmm. Now we're just not talking about that. Here comes the favors. Here comes the blessings. Here comes the miracles. Here comes the mysteries. You want the revelations. Come on, you want the revelation of who he is. The revelation of the Godhead in your life. You want to read the book of Revelations and understand it. Yeah. Amen? Some yeah. of you are saying, yes, you're there. You're in that book. Yeah. John saw him. Listen to me. He saw him from his head to his toes. Wow. Even described his hair. And the woman in the book of Song of Solomon described nobody else, even the color of his locks and everything that he looked like. And when you get close enough to him, you'll be able to see all these hidden features that you haven't seen before. I haven't seen them all, but I have seen his face. And I have seen the holes in his hands. And I have seen the holes in his cheeks that look like craters where they plucked his beard out. I've seen him in his holy place and in his highest place. But I want to see more and I want to hear his voice because it's his voice of the waters that shakes everything in your life and fills you to the highest and changes who you are into who he is. I'm telling you it's real. I'm not going to tell you how to get out of this. I get out of the spirit. Then I beat myself up for two or three days because I shouldn't have done this or that. And then you're tested again to what needs to be purified. Amen? Amen. Now listen to me, please. Your voice is going to come alive when you come alive. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
I'm 83 years old. I'm not yelling. This is the this is the tone of my voice. You can all hear me. Yes. And most people, when they have their microphone in their hands, I don't hear them. I don't. I've had to tell them, lift your voice. Lift your voice. That's where it is. Lift your voice and you lift your faith. You're not lifting this voice. You're lifting yeah. this voice yeah. of the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so he's coming to purify the house yeah. of Jacob, the priesthood. Oh, hallelujah. Thanks. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thanks. And I've never had a normal service every time I go out preaching. Mm. They're wild. Amen. It's just like a wave came in. And the strangest things he does. And they can't blame me if it went that way because I didn't do it. And they can't blame me if they didn't get anything because he did it. I'm telling you, he did it. And I've seen people slide across the room from here to that back seat and get a rug burn. And their head hit the wall so hard I thought they weren't going to get up. This was in Australia. Oh my. And I saw 17, 14 days. Who said glory? Who said that? I for well, 14 days, brother, and Stephen. 14 days. The people came in the room and went out, and nobody uttered a word. Nobody. I'm talking before God. The Holy Ghost took over that service. And it started with a new song. God's doing a new thing. He's doing it in you. And he's doing it in me. That was a new song. He's doing a new thing. He's going to set you free. And I looked at this girl. Michelle was with me. And I said, is he starting in you? And fire hit her. And it dripped off her. She turned red from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. She laughed until the tears were rolling down her cheeks like fire. And the pastor got up. He didn't say a thing about the service. He just dismissed us. The people, you did, you could hear people breathe. They picked up their things and walked out the door and came back that night and it started all over again. Nobody said a word to the person next to them, behind them. That's hard to do. Fourteen days, we were in straitjackets. The Holy Ghost got into my legs till I walked like a duck, like this. I was a little younger then, maybe 15 years younger. What year was that? Yeah, about 15 years Do it younger. Again, Lord. My legs ached, and I'd, and I'd waddle back to the church service again. And we'd sing another song or I'd preach, and I remember I laid hands on the pastor's wife. She would lift it off of the floor and sail through the air. I thought, oh my, she's 80 some years old. Her head hit the wall. But she, nobody said anything. I'm just praying over people. And I couldn't see because there was so much glory coming in front of my eyes. It was like drips of water. And I couldn't see through it. It looked like I was looking through a lattice. So they sit me in a chair so I could lay hands on people. There were so many people. And everybody, everybody was laid out. It wasn't me, honey. It was the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And doors opened everywhere for us. Yeah. We're down in the capital city. We stayed there quite a while. Doors kept opening. We just believed for the Holy Ghost to do it, honey. We didn't, we didn't know we were, ourselves what we were doing. But you got to let him take over. Let him take over. Let him surprise you. Don't get upset when things go wrong. A friend of mine told me that her, she was singing this song, something about water. Something about water breaking through the house or something. And it was breaking through the house downstairs in the basement. So she just kept singing the new song and never got upset. Let her basement flood. Just kept singing. Come on. I told you don't have to do that. I don't either. But anyway, she kept singing. He's got a song for every problem. He's got a song, honey, for every shout. He's got a song for every story you have to tell. He's birthing a ready writer in you. Hallelujah. The tongue of a ready writer. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let the hallelujahs roll. Glory be to God. The Lord is saying to several of you in this room, there's things that you think you need. The Lord said, I see you pulling this little grocery cart behind you. 
He said, you don't really need anything. I'm going to supply. Just let me do it. Let me do it. Watch and see how I do it. Hallelujah. This week, listen, listen, this week, last week, last week. Just little things. But he, but he doesn't give to you just for you to have. It's either you need it or you need to give to somebody else. Don't get this thing that God just wants to bless you because he wants to bless you. God doesn't waste his stuff like that. He blesses you according to how you bless others and how you live your life or to help others. Because I've gotten too many things. They were not my color nor my size, so I know they weren't for me. Amen? You got to get this. I like, now this is sort of not your appetite, but anyway, I'm going to tell you what happened. You'll love it. I needed a new nightlight for my bathroom, but I didn't know what I wanted, and I kept looking at the store and wasting time. And then I, there's a certain deodorant. I don't use anything with the, what is it, aluminum that's in it. And so I'm just wondering in my mind, I wonder if they make any other type that I, other than what I use, because it costs a little more. And I get a goodie box, and if you're listening today, you're online. I mean, you're on the two. You're the one that sent it. I got a, bu a box in the mail with a nightlight. It lights up my whole bathroom. I've never seen one like it. It's not your regular nightlight. Doesn't have a bulb in it. It's got those, whatever those little lights are, LED lights. And I got a stick of deodorant without aluminum in it. I thought you might need this. <laughs> a lot of us don't think enough to get enough. You know what I'm saying? Make a little list. Make a few things and see, you know. I wasn't really wanting it. Wanting it. Then a friend of mine down the street, I saw him last week. And I got that. I just thought about those two things, and I got it the next day in the mail. Well, it was already on its way. So I go down the street and visit a friend. He's got a new red Cadillac. And I knew they didn't have a lot of money. He said, um, his wife said, listen to this story. She's prayed for me in the days past. She said, and I told him how to open up to the Lord. You got to open up to this if you want it. And there's this new, there's two new cars in the driveway. He's at McDonald's and a red Cadillac pulls out. And he says in his heart, boy, that's a nice car. I sure would like to have one like that. <laughs> His wife is on the looking up things on the wherever you look up, eBay or whatever, on her phone. And she said, Rex, whoops, shouldn't have said that. Look at this, <laughs> look at this red Cadillac. He said, Yeah, it looks like what I saw coming out of McDonald's. He bought the car, and that was the same car that came out of McDonald's. When he said, I would like one like that. And it was somebody else told me the same story. They, they just said it in their heart, and it showed up the next day. And it wasn't a small item. It was a costly perfume. Not perfume, perfume, but you know what I'm saying? Something costly. So a friend of mine sent me a bottle of perfume and a bottle of this deodorant and a cake of soap. The soap was $45. They got more something than something. And then the perfume was about $300 an ounce, I think. No, it was 300 for three ounces. And the deodorant was $100. And I made the mistake of carrying it on the plane. And they, had to, they didn't know how much was in it, so they took it. I used a little of it. But, you know, I thought, I will never afford this. I'll, I won't spend God's money on this, because I, I just don't do that. Do you know that somebody likes me somewhere? <laughs> And every time I run out of that perfume, I get another bottle. Wow. And I don't pay $300 for it. Come on. Who knows who the big master is? I mean, some of you know what I'm talking about. God works these favors. Because you know what you've been doing? You've been feeding the hungry. You've been clothing the naked. You've been housing people that have no place to go. Here a little and there a little. And God adds it all up, and oh, it comes to a whooping amount here on this cash register of what you've been doing for him. you got to get that nature, that nature in you. Come on. That nature in you that wants to pour out. I don't care what it is. That nature that's there. Hallelujah. I told you this about $20 story. 
I don't always have a lot of cash. And I said, Lord, I got $20 exactly in my purse. And I got some weeds out here in the yard. You have to talk to the Lord like he's right there. And uh, I'll pay somebody if they'll come and do it. And I want to tell you, in one hour, a man knocks on my door. And he says, lady, I've run out of gas at your front door. But I'll pull all of your weeds for $20. That's happened to me numerous times. Numerous times. My chocolate, remember my chocolate story? Anybody have a chocolate story? You gotta have a testimony. <laughs> of the flavors and the favors of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. I got on this plane coming out of Jordan. I'm way in the back where they're not serving meals. And I didn't have any money. <laughs> And I didn't know how I was going to get it, but I knew who could get it. And I had a red-headed friend with me. Red, red hair you've ever seen. And we're two seats in. And all of a sudden, a voice comes over to me. She's half asleep already, and the plane hadn't moved. He said, would you two ladies like to sit in first class? I was up. <laughs> up. Had her hand pulling her. Oh what did he say? I said, I'll tell you later. Just follow me. <laughs> Pulled her all the way up there. Oh, what are we doing up here? Oh, we're going to eat today. Hallelujah. <laughs> he saw her hair. Because they don't have red hair in Jordan. And he favored us. I saw him look at it. She had this flaming, red strawberry hair. Her plaque was that big. It went all the way around the back of her head. She plaited it here and pulled it across the back. I'm telling you, honey, it was bigger than any squash you've ever seen. <laughs> and there we get, to, listen, you don't know what God's going to use in you that will give you favor. Oh, yeah. Just keep letting him dress you. Yeah. Let him dress you with the word that you hear. Let him dress you with the nuggets that's coming your way. Come on, I see God, I see angels storming them like this. I didn't know for a long time what it was happening. And I saw him hit people on the chest. And they had these little settings all on their chest. And he was dressing the bride, bride with these jewels. I've seen that a half a dozen or maybe more. Where they, they're throwing jewels. They're preparing the bride. They're dressing her for the wedding. Hallelujah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? you got to get so excited about God, you're starving to death. Hallelujah. You're so hungry, and a meal is not going to do it. No happy meal is going to do it either. Hallelujah. You're going to have to have that meal that's real. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The whole theme of the book of the Song of Solomon is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I first read it, I thought, who in the world put this in the Bible? And there was a great argument one time because they didn't want it in the Bible. Some of you didn't know that. But it tells them everything. It just makes you look naked. Now, you know what I mean by that. Don't get any other visions. But it, it just, it's like you're not dressed. You're not dressed. You're not, we're not, I'm not dressed. I'm talking to myself. I'm not dressed. And I said, I've never saw the Lord like that. I've never, never thought about the Lord like that. But listen, you have enough wives to describe something, but you got to be a people that you ascribe your greatness, your greatness of him to him. Yes. And Rodney Howard Brown, a lot of people didn't believe in him. I've seen preachers turn him away. I've, I've seen some things I wish I hadn't have seen. But he said to the Lord, if you don't come down here and bless me, I'm going to run up there and bless you. Did you know that he said that? And that's how he got the anointing on his life. Wow. So when he showed up in the churches, the people thought he was kind of screwy. Or there was something wrong with him. But he wasn't. He see, and listen, the Lord came down, and he said, to, he had to say to the Lord, if you don't stop, I'm going to die. That's what he said, if you don't stop. Yeah. His presence came upon him. It was so strong. Oh. He said he was going to die. How many want that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be the first in line. Come on. Yeah. Good Lord, i, I got to have it. I've got, Lord, I've got to have it. I don't care what you have to do to me, but i got to have it. Lord, I need it. <laughs> Lord, I want it. <laughs> oh, God, I've got to have it. you got to be desperate. Oh, hola boy, shaman of And so when you get ready to go somewhere, he's going to say to you, I want you to wear this and look like this. And I'm in a church one night. And before we could go preach that night, I had the revival. He said, I want you to wear your hair another way. Anybody have the Lord talk to you like that? Yeah. You're fortunate you got some hair. I am too. 
But he said, I want you to write another way. In other words, he's getting me to say, I'm going to do something different. Right. And you're going to be my guinea pig. Hallelujah. You got to be willing to be laughed at, rejected, rejected, resisted. You got to be willing to be ashamed, willing not be, be made ashamed. Oh, they did horrible things to him when they stripped him and crucified him. I can't imagine people could be so cruel. But I'm just telling you, he's dressing the bride now. He told me three weeks ago, well, I'm choosing my bride. That's what he said to me. He said, I'm choosing my bride now. He's testing people to see if they'll obey him. I'm being real to you. He's testing to see if we'll be real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so somebody in here and another lady, I told you my, I had heard from my son six years. This is how it happened. Somebody in here and another lady gave me $20,000. Well, I was more than that had in a long time. And then he didn't tell me to do it. But you just know how things come up on the keyboard, on the computer. I was to give that money to dig several wells in Rwanda. Now, I wasn't in the picture when somebody told a friend of mine, he just returned from Rwanda Christmas, and he cried. He said, I cried so hard when I got home because they didn't have any water. They had to boil all the water to drink. And he said, they want $30,000, and I don't have 30,000 faith. And he said, I just went home and stood in the middle of my living room floor, and I, he said, I cried. She's telling me the story on the phone from West Virginia. I said, well, she hadn't told me the 30,000 part yet. I said, well, how much money do they need? And she said, well, they want 30,000. I said, well, if God wants it to happen, it'll be provided. And the next day, a lady sends me $15,000 in the mail. It's just after Christmas. Because she was believing for a breakthrough in her home, her marriage, and her children. And she said, my house needs restoring, but this money is not going to fix it. So I'm sowing it as a sacrifice to see what God will do. It turned into two sacrifices, because when I got it, I sowed it. She said within 10 days, God turned her whole family upside down. Wow. She said, let me tell you what happened. She was so rejoicing. She may be watching now. She watches every week. I said, I know it. She said, Sister Ruth must be praying. I said, no, honey, it's your sacrifice. It was your sacrifice. We prayed. But, but you can't just stop at one sacrifice. It's a continual thing. Your body, your flesh doesn't want to do it. Come on, but it's your spirit that's willing. And so I said, well, call him up. I got 15. And then the next day I got another five. So I had 20. And then I found out they only needed 18.5. We didn't need the 30. Come on. We didn't need the 30. And they're starting the Wells Monday. That came from this prayer meeting here. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. That means you're always going to have a drink of water. Hallelujah. You're always going to have a bath. Your water's going to be there. What you do for others, God will do for you. I'm just telling you how that thing triples suddenly. Then suddenly, I, I'm not here. You know, nothing is not really moving. Things are too quiet. And I'm talking to the Lord in my mind. I said, Lord, what have I done? <laughs> I always question my spirit first. And all of a sudden, in one hour, my one granddaughter, hi, Nanny. And the other one is ringing in. And while she's ringing in, my son is ringing in to my friend that had just called me that my granddaughter wanted to speak to me. Wow. Can, you, can you get the picture here? I mean, it's one call after another in, in five minutes. God said it had been taking but an hour to root up something. Are you listening to me? Yes. 
Yes. Can you say yes? Yes. 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 glasses for two years. I got the glasses one day, and I got the, the phone what, the next week. And I know the car's got to come next. Yes. <laughs> if he doesn't, I'm still run with the nail sticking out of it. I mean, whoever is this thing, I'm riding down the road with the nail sticking out of the tire, and it falls out, and the tire's okay. Yes. That's what you want. Yes. You just want everything to be okay. Can you give the Lord a great shout? Yes. Yes. 